So we got Bernie Buffins Schwarfs. Gross. 2A. I played with them about halfway through the season. Against T Selfs. Rats. Disgusting oh, rats. Disgusting game. So you played Bernie? Yeah, Bernie was in uh, 2A with me. It was my orcs. Oh, he beat nice. me I, up. I, I, I played T Selfs. Oh, that's because perfect. The party, but... yeah, yeah, perfect. We got one from each div. <laughs> hey, Hummer. So yeah, we got uh, T Selfs rats first with the uh, AG4 Vermin, AG5 Gutter. Both of which are pretty gross pieces. The AG4 Vermin I don't think is going to be as big a deal in this game as it would be in others though. It means he'll be able to get him away easier and that's about it. We have a, a pretty decent looking uh, gutter runner. We have, of course, the AG5 Sacker, who went block instead of wrestle. I might have gone wrestle, but he might be going for a, a retriever and giving him sure hands. Block tackle gutter runner is not going to be doing very much good this game. And the wrestle strip ball gutter. If that gutter can get... If, uh, if T-Self can get rid of Bernie's ball carrier, then he can take this game with that gutter runner. Between him and the IG5 Leap. And other than him, we got a Niggled Kicker, Dirty Player, Rookie Gutter, and Rookie Vermin. 13 players is nice, though. Especially considering he'll be getting inducements. Uh, I need a moment. Oh, yeah, all good. Because I'm, 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 I'm trying to log up into the chat with my cell phone so i can read stuff oh so, yeah yeah all right yeah okay so uh you were talking about the 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 t-cells team right yeah yeah the, the skaven yeah it's a it's a it's a very lean team uh he manages to have a bent and uh and and manages to even though he has the bent he will get the inducements he needs so that's that's nice uh, when we see Bernie's team, I think the, their biggest weakness is I, they're not a great team against rats. They, they probably do great against orcs or whatever, but but here they will have a lot of TV wasted. Uh, they have claw, they have strength up. All that stuff is just bloat against rats. So uh, it will be an interesting match, I think. We can pull their team up now. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so they also have, they have 12 players on the, uh, the Chaos Dwarves, but they have significantly less value players, right? Because all of these yeah. Chorfs, only one of them really means anything. You got two guard guys, an Agi-1 guy, and a movement 3 guy. At least that movement 3 has Mighty Blow. Yeah. But then, you look uh, at the Sheriff, you look at Waluigi, and you look at the Postman, and they're all, like, crazy good players. Yes. I think it will come down to those three, especially the, the both bulls. Both bulls are great against rats because they're fast. And one of them is, is great to tie them down with tight and tackle. The other one is great to, for blitzing them because it's strength four, it has mighty blow, it has tackle, it can disengage with break tackle, and it gets two hits with a frenzy. It's like a perfect uh, rat hunter. But the rest of the team, eh, not so much. The... The, the sure hands will be important too because uh, T self has a very good sucker. But uh, other than that, not much to say. If that movement seven gets removed, though, suddenly you're carrying on a rookie hobgoblin, oh. which feels really bad, or you're carrying on the postman. Yeah. And that feels pretty bad using that piece for ball carrying. Yeah. Yeah, and even if you manage to pick it up with the postman, the. The gutter runner can uh, red dice you to strip ball, so it's not great. You, you have to be very careful about punch man, uh, punch bad Bob. Yeah. He, <laughs> there is one saving grace if he does carry, have to carry on with postman. He can guard corner if he's very careful with where he puts his free chorps with guard. Yeah. That but... makes it uh, uh, three dice in against. So, yeah. yeah, and I mean, I've I've had that I've had those sacks happen to me before. I've been, uh, three red dice sacked, but yeah, that it's not great odds. So he'll have that going for him, but I don't suspect that to come into play. I think once Bob is out of a play, Bernie's in a lot of trouble. 
So uh, what inducements would you get as the right? I think I go for a babe and a bribe, or a, a wizard and a bribe. Because he's 1500 to 1700, right? No, it's 1490 to 1700, so we've got 200k. Yeah. So it's going to be a babe and a wizard. Because T-Self doesn't have any bank. T-Self does yeah. not have claw, David. Yeah, maybe it's not a bad choice, and uh, the wizard is fundamental here. Yeah, you, you never go into this matchup without a wizard. That is scary. Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, what T-Self wants is to uh, score on Bernie's half, then score on his own half, and make him try to catch him uh, when he has a two-touchdown advantage. That's his game, because yeah. otherwise he, he'll get beat down. Bernie, I think, if he gets defense first... I think we see Waluigi play a very safe safety. Because if yeah. Waluigi goes down, then the gutter runners can just run. Like Bernie cannot respond to that. His, he's going to be too slow otherwise with his tackle. So if you're Bernie and you win the toss, you go defense on overtime format? That's that's kind of tricky. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying he should take defense first. I, I, I say he goes offense and he beats up some rats and makes him have a hard time for offense. Right, yeah. But and if he does wind if, up on defense. Yeah. That because, because that's another interesting thing. Because uh, during the regular season, uh, agility coaches usually like defense first. But here you have uh, the, the thing that if you, if you take defense first, then you take offense on the same drive, on, on the same half that will share the rerolls with the overtime. So that's not great. If you're T self and you win the toss, do you go offense? Yeah? I'm not gonna say anything to you, T self. This is your choice. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, good luck, T self. My, my heart is. Uh, is in both places right now because it's my my party deep friend versus my clan friend. So <laughs> I hope you both beat out beat each other. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm rooting for Bernie here partly because I and Chorfs and Rats are both disgusting. I want to see Chorfs though because I want to see the sheriff kill some stuff. But also because <laughs> Bernie was in my division, and I'm 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 looking at two way because there's some really good coaches up there. Maybe maybe Bernie can take some bodies in the Challengers Cup. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, Bernie will, will be more uh, more painful for the other coaches than Tisov will. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder. Uh, let me see who their next opponent would be. Let me see if that's a spoiler or not. It is not. So if so, the winner of this game will be facing Organized Crime. This is a one-season orc team, I believe, looking at it. And it's got a strength up lineman on it. I can pull it up, actually. And pull up their future opponent real quick. Organized Crime. Which is honestly a solid-looking orc team for just one season. With three guard, four guard, even on all four blitzers, and a mighty blow black orc, strength four lineman. This won't be an easy game for either team if they win it. I think mm. if the rats win it, I would favor them. If the chorfs win it, I might favor the orcs. Mm. Yeah, this is a a nice orc team to take against chorf, chorf because they are they will be underdogs. They would be the underdog, so they can get that bribe for their third player. They have lots of uh, of that nice guard, and they have. Uh, but yeah, against rats, they're not so nice. They only have two tackle. The, the rats can just dance around them, and that's never great. Yeah, they have the sure hands at least, but the rats should be able to make quick work of this orc team should they take this game. So who who do you think is going to take it, then, uh, Truk? Um. That's interesting because I was talking to Bernie um, I mean, uh, a few minutes ago and he's not very confident in himself. <laughs> he actually thinks he's going to lose 
But I look at his team and I've seen him play and I think he can win this. So I don't know. But his lack of confidence has me like rattled. Uh, I, I, I think he, he, he underestimates his team. Shorts are really good against rats. Even a short team like his that is not designed for that, he's, he still has a lot of tackle. He still has a lot of mighty blow. He's, uh, he has the tools to, he has to be patient, I think. Yeah. Don't rush, don't, don't give him an opening. Just be patient. You can take your eight turns. It, it, even, even so, it's not the end of the world if Bernie doesn't score on his half. He just doesn't need to be scored upon on his half. Because if he scores, if, if, he, if, if his own drive just ends 0-0, zero, zero, then the rats won't get uh, two KO rolls and they will probably have to score quick on their own drive and then you can, and, and then you can score back. The real tragedy would be to lose the ball and get scored on your own half. What do you think? Sorry, I started uh, choking on my coffee there. Yeah, I, I mean, you're exactly right there. Uh, if if Bernie gets scored on on his offense, then he loses the game. I don't think there's recovering from that for this Torf team unless he pitch clears the rats in the, pro in the process and the rats don't wake up from their KOs. And I expect T-Stealth yeah. to have a babe here, so they should wake up. Yeah, especially from two, from two KO rolls, they should all come back. Yeah. I think my heart is with Bernie right now, but I think T self with a wizard, I think he can take this game. Yeah. I I, I wonder what will happen because uh, this usually happens to co to bash coaches against rats and against elves, that they are on turn six, or uh, turn and turn seven maybe, and they say, okay, I have to score now, and they set up something that is not very safe. And then they get blitz, they lose the ball, and they get scored upon. And, and I think that's a big mistake. A mistake I, I made a lot uh, uh, last season and seasons before. Uh, sometimes you just have to chill. And if you can't score, don't score. It doesn't matter. Then just take it to the next half. Uh, make sure to be very safe and make sure to get all the punches you need to get. That's the key, I think. Yeah, that's the name of the game for Bernie, because if he makes one positioning mistake that leaves, like... Even like a four plus dodge on the ball. I think we see either the bolt or we see Terrence here go and get it. Yeah. Especially with the kind of recovery he has with uh, the IG5 gutter runner. Yeah. Uh, T self left, so I can't ask him to tell me when they're in game. So let's start spamming the button and try and get in there. Sure. I'll spam on my own end as well. Rebel. They are not up yet. I'm not entirely... I can't... I recognize some of the teams here. I don't recognize what they're playing, though. Like the Lords of Decay. I recognize that team name from somewhere. But there's a bunch of rebel matches going on right now. So, so uh, you're rolling, Holt? Yes, I, uh, I I looked at my team. I looked at rel three teams right now. I decided I don't really want to rebuild my orc team. Rebuild two black orcs while also giving up 400k in inducements and fighting spiraling expenses while I try to rebuild, losing more players, yada yada. <laughs> that makes sense. So maybe I see you on the party div uh, in a couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, yeah, there's going to be another party div probably. I uh I went with high elves this time, bringing back an old favorite theme of mine of uh, alliteration of injuries. <laughs> that's that's fun. And pull a team up. Real I'm quick. a masochist. I'm going. I'm going dwarves again. You're doing dwarves again. We're gonna die again. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, this is, uh, but maybe. Real quick, the high elf team. I'm rolling some fun names in here. I I, I have fun making alliteration themes. That's why I love the green weenies. And I'm doing the two reroll build because I'm I'm crazy. But it's Greenhorn, right? What can go wrong? Yeah. yeah Nothing ever goes wrong in Greenhorn. Yeah. Look, worst case scenario, you just start with a new team after the Greenhorn, and you get a an easy noob stumper. Yeah, uh, that's how that works now. Here right. we go. Game's up. 
I think uh, if I wind up rerolling these high elves, I'm going to do a stunty season. In the Greenhorn Div, take like goblins or halflings or something, and just mess around. Yeah, yeah, halflings can can be can be mean, especially against TB one thousand teams. Oh yeah, I love halflings against uh, one thousand. Yeah, there's so many high elves. It honestly has me considering changing that team over to dark elves, just because there's so damn many. All right, and it looks like T self has offense first. Bernie's setting up his defense now, throwing free chorps on the line. Let's see who's got the fan factor. Bernie has the fan factor <coughs> plus one. T self went with the bribe the wizard and V Babe. Which is what we expected. Yeah. And Bernie, Bernie of course. Fame. Yep, he has fame, he has plus one. Bernie being smart and benching that ball carrier. No need to put him in unnecessary harm. And setting up really close to the line. There he goes. Backing up a little. I mean, you're not really scared that the rats will punch you more with the quick snap because that's not what they do. But yeah. you don't want to be too, so forward that they just run past you and you can't reach them. That's yeah, it's movement seven line rats. They can get behind you if you set up that close. Even setting up one back is a little bit scarily close. Yeah, I would go too. I'm. A, I also prefer to set up like on my logo though against most teams with my works. So. I, I tend to play it very safe on defense, give him that little bit of room. Oh god, morally not Amazons. You remember how that went for me in clan. You were there. You saw everything. I'm never playing Amazons again. <laughs> yeah, but Sons uh, in, in clan have the disadvantage of playing against teams that are already kind of developed. Uh, a first season Amazon team can really just smoke uh, a division if they want. Oh yeah, I imagine I could do like really well with Amazons going in fresh. I just don't want to play them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like their play style. I, I want to play I something fast and dash. Or something dumb like, st like, like stunties. That's why I leaned High Elves over Dark Elves originally. I think high elves also have a have a chance of being better uh, in the long term because in these uh, eternal leagues with claw mighty blows stuff, uh, in the end, the only way to reliably keep an elf team going is having like a four or five star players, and the rest uh, have to be expendable. You can't take care of all of them with your apple; it just doesn't work that way. So, so high elves can do that better than dark elves. Yeah, I think it depends on Dark Elves if you run one or two Witch on that. If you run one Witch, then you're generally fine. You have your Protect 5, your 4 Blitzers, and your Witch. But if you run more than that, you're benching somebody, or you're exposing somebody who's good. On the on like this setup, at least. And then you still have a lot of players. High Elves kind of run into the same problem, too, if they run uh, free Catchers. Because you have your Catchers, your Thrower, you have your Blitzers, and then... Ideally, you get one or two star linemen, like a guard or a stat. And yeah, morally, what elves are like kind of an exception to that problem we were just talking about, where you have your two ward answers you want to protect, maybe you have a thrower and you have one or two catchers you're trying to protect. And they're super easy to rebuild. Yeah, at the end of the day, you have to think, uh, how can you sustain this team in the yeah. long run in this kind of league and wood elves don't have that problem <clears throat> yeah wood elves can easily sustain themselves it's so easy to level wood elves no foul this turn we're blocking with a dirty player on the line take advantage of his wrestle and i imagine yep it looks like we're going to be hitting this hobgoblin on the right side let me switch to what the do you think about POV, actually. What do you think about leaving the the bolt carrier out? 
Uh, I, I like that. He is so essential to Bernie's offense. Without that ball carrier, yeah, there's I a agree. wizard you have to worry about and the strip ball gutter. That is super, super scary. I agree. Yeah, Woody's having an easy time because the catchers have dodge. That's, that's the one thing that's going to stink about running high elves. There's only two block and no dodge to start things off. But my plan is to vanity pass just about every turn in Greenhorn. It's going to be fun games. Vanity pass shootout. That's my ideal game. <coughs> exactly, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an Andy Davo first season. Just vanity pass every turn. Uh, that gutter is probably getting claw palmed. I guess the claw doesn't matter. That gutter might get palmed, though. Maybe not. One, two... Uh, two GFIs. Three, that four, could be a uh, last action kind of thing for our friend the Sheriff. Uh, I wouldn't do it. It's a rookie. It's not that important. If it was one of the good ones exposed like that, yeah, two GFIs, go for it, but... I mean, you say that, even a rookie gutter is pretty scary. Now, this guy, if he's exposed, I wouldn't mind going after. Yeah. That's just one Absolutely. GFI. And that guy's probably gonna be exposed. I don't see how you... He could dodge his lineman out, but I think he's gonna take a block of him here in a second. Now, I'm curious where he puts a ball, because it could be in danger here with currently how people are based up. It'll depend on the results of the block on Don't Rely on Viapo. Maybe you just go back, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna back it up good. And he is out of range of that bull. That's what I was worried about, was the bull sneaking through yeah, there he's... and a push. Yeah, that, that rat is super fast, at you fire. You don't need to be anywhere close to the action to make a good pass with it. <clears throat> so, Ooh, so something, I, uh, something... I would go for the, for the blood tackle guy. I like wouldn't hate going for uh, the blotch tackle guy and then sneaking the diving tackle onto uh, the wrestle. You can push that guy next to the wrestle of gutter runner as well and you can have diving tackle yeah. on both of them. Yeah. I like it. I mean you can just base up that other gutter runner for sheriff and you're pretty okay. Because <coughs> you can have tackle and diving tackle on those left two and you can just have tackle on the right one. Does need to, I think, respect the lineman scoring for it, though, especially because that's a 3 out of 6 SPP lineman. That's a dirty player right there, just waiting to happen. Do you go for a 3 dice on the blood there, or just... Or is it too many resources? Uh, it's only the one chorf blocker you'd be committing. I wouldn't hate it. You can stick him uh, online with that block tackle gutter runner, so he doesn't block his path to slot the diving tackle in. Dropping and him one down. Go. Yep, that's still fine. And knockdown is good. And this is kind of why I didn't want that short blocker there. Because now this bold with diving tackle can't get in and mark both of them. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I think there was a Blitz on the Dauntless guy as well. This is a safer play, but I think you're right. I think there was a Blitz on the Dauntless gutter runner as well. So you see Edmund take a little tumble. Right, if you were, if you were willing to go with the, with the bull, yeah, you could have gone for the, for the Dauntless guy. I, I was thinking about the Bludger because I thought he would go with the, with the blocker that has... <clears throat> no foul this turn from Bernie as a dirty player goes up to mark for rookie. I wouldn't have hated a foul on that uh, Blodge gutter runner, but I can definitely understand not.
the big weakness about his uh, diving tackle guy, he has no break tackle. So just put one guy on him and he's not a reliable dot at all. It's not reliable, but 75% is still okay. It's obviously not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Uh, I had my experience with that. Oh yeah, no, I do too. I never rely on a 75%. <laughs> I played Camry for two seasons in WCW. I hate it, but... I know that pain all too well. So I don't believe... Yeah, I don't believe there's any kind of chain push to get, in, get a score right now. And I don't think he needs to either. If he really wants to score this turn, he could bring the dirty player up. Uh, maybe not. I think he can bring a lineman up to blitz off noob of clan noob if he really wanted to. He could bring the dirty player and this rookie here, Harold, around his assists, I think. If he really wanted to score this turn. You can blitz off this chorf. <coughs> it looks like we might be seeing a hit on the sheriff. There's no way he bases him unless that's his plan. And yeah, he's gonna block him off with a lineman. That's a two die right there, because that chorf doesn't have a guard. Oh, yeah, Morley. Oh, he's niggle. Yeah, yeah, he's the sheriff guy. has a niggle, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. And there's a dirty I, I player waiting in the wings. If he gets a knockdown, just following foul. Yeah, exactly. All the way. You, I would absolutely sacrifice a turn to foul this player. Although I'm unsure what his plan is for a blitz to try and get in one of his gutters free. He knows Bernie's not gonna be aggressive and rush after a ball, so he can he can play a little bit with the chorfs. Oh no knockdown, that's a shame. We do still have a blitz. He could come in with a wrestle gunner runner if he wants. And I believe a four plus dodge. Mm, diving tackle though. Yeah, diving tackle and tackle makes that not a great idea. But if he wants to use dirty player, there's no other option. Maybe at this point you just punch him with the dirty player? Yeah, I think that might be what happens. I almost would have liked to have seen a reroll on that hit. To get a three assist foul with dirty player on a niggled player, like a player like the Sheriff, I wouldn't have hated it. But that's not the kind of player T-Self is. What he does need to be careful of, though, is not letting this gutter runner here, Terrence, get surfed. Because that Frenzy Bull could do it very easily. And drop him into position, and then it's a easy blitz. That's an armor broken chorf and a stun. There's almost something more. And because of where he pushed him, that gutter runner can't back up now. He has to dodge through the hobgoblin tackle zones. Had he not yeah, followed that block followed. up, or if he pushed the chorf up one more, he would have been okay. Yeah. I agree. I think he wants to score here, but I think he just made it harder for himself by, uh, by following that block up or not pushing that chorf over. Catch is a one. Catches oh, a 1 or 9. Got... Okay, this just got very interesting. And that's not a great scatter either. This bull centaur can come yeah. around and pummel that gutter runner. And the dirty player can go pick that ball up and get it downfield. Or at least to safety. Yeah, so you can put the diving tackle guy with his three GFIs in contact with the ball and I think that's his main priority because that's what's stopping the rats from getting the ball 
Yeah, putting the diving tackle up there would be very nice. Having it relevant on the ball. But somebody needs to hit Terrence first. And either you go with Waluigi and you just take the Mighty Blow tackle hit on him. Or you go with the Postman. Get him off your player, maybe push him onto that Mighty Blow Chorf. And have Waluigi go and take out one of those gutter runners over there that are more relevant to the play. Yeah, T Self's plan was the two turn here. Him with Waluigi. I think you just punch him with one Waluigi. It's, it's also a very good punch. It's mighty blow tackle yeah, on this very good gutter run. That is a very good gutter runner hit, and you'll have two tries at it. You'll have three die into two die. Yeah, so you just punch him and you still have your blitz. There he you goes go. down. He's not out though. Okay, now I, I would put the postman on the ball. I think um I think we're gonna take the hit on Gastronok first, the lineman just uh, above the sheriff. But, but, and we're gonna put him but sideways. If you don't knock him down, he gets in the way. That's why I would do it up. No, he doesn't. If you don't knock him down, you can push him you Oh yeah, I see what you mean. Okay. <laughs> uh maybe we take the hit on uh on Sigmund Ven. I think I, I would like to hit, hit that lineman, but after the three GFIs. See, that's what happens. Oh, but you know what? We still have the Blitz. <laughs> we do still have the Blitz, so the ball can still go and get him there. We'll just have to Blitz his way through this lineman. Or through the Storm Vermin. If you don't put Diving Tackle on the ball, he's just going to rat you. Yeah, he's just going to pick yeah, up the ball like and leave. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus and you're fucked. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, this rookie Chorf here that's near midfield, uh, like lower mid-left. Go and stand next to this gutter runner here, the block tackle guy. So that yeah. way the movement free dude can go and get more relevant and get closer yeah, to the I actual agree. play. Keep attacking. And I just realized I've been watching the match from the defense perspective. I'm yeah, just I did that after the first turn too. If he blitzes, uh, if he blitzes the storm vermin down via G four, ABJ here could come and pick it up. But we're gonna pop a chain push instead. I think he will try to pick it up, and I don't like it because yeah. if he doesn't, if he doesn't, that's a, a oh, he picked it up. <laughs> He's got it. That, yeah, that was very, very dangerous because if if he one in nine that, that was a rat score for sure. Oh, that's an easy rat score if you want to nines at. Nobody fails a GFI. What are you doing, man? Just stop. Put the diving tackle next to your guy. No, he made two. Oh, he what? chained up both. Why would you do that? He and chained the up most both. important player didn't move. Yeah, that diving tackle needed to get more relevant. He needed to just key up one GFI, and if he used a reroll, he needed to stop right there and get the diving tackle over. Yeah. Because now, this is super easy for the rats, right? Yeah, this is a classic rat play. This Agi 5 guy over here can come and pick up that ball easy and just pop it right over to Erica <laughs> in the end zone. Yeah, or, or, or he can just click rat, click ball, click end zone. Yeah, he can even he go score the Agi 5, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's probably better ways to do it, but if you're lazy, you can do that and still pretty likely. Yeah. <laughs> He can even move a uh, Snorg over here as three SPP lineman. He can move him relevant as well as to keep things safe in case the pass fails. Oh, uh, Vern is going to be kicking himself after the. Yeah. He, he, it was his big chance. I would like to see T Self take the mighty blow hit on the guard chorf, though. That would be a very nice removal if he can get it. And I think it's worth the risk, at least. Yeah, I agree. It's it would it would be a, a big hit, even though it's he's not a, a problem really for the AG five. You, it's better if he's not there. It's that's like a an insurance or a future kind of hit, right? Yeah. Uh, this end zone gutter will not. He is a rookie. Zero out of six. This lineman though, if he gets the ball and he scores, he's got a level. There you go. You get the ball to him. Guard Truff goes down. 
Mighty blow hit. Nothing. AG5 will come in now, take that ball and leave. Yeah, Erica here is going to be the main scoring target for T-Self. First dodge is good. We'll see if he decides to leap or if he goes for a dodge through the tackle zone. And he's just going to go pick it up instead. And hop on out. Oh, he's spending the reroll here, though. Tackle doing work. No snakes. Just a 2 plus pass. Okay. He passes good, and that's a touchdown for T Self. Yeah. It's not over because Verdi has plenty of turns to grab the ball and, and run it in, but. This isn't over at if all. He had, yeah, but if he had secured that, this would be over, you know? But yeah. in his favor. If, if he had the ball and he managed to score on T Self's offense, then Bernie had this in the back. Going for the, uh, the shorter score here, he'll have five turns. He's got the movement seven Hobgoblin, so I, I think Bernie can pull this off. Yeah. He has the speed, he has the, the punching power. He should be able to break through the rats. Uh, and uh, and T-Self's game now will be, uh, he has to use the wizard soon and score fast. And then Bernie is always two touchdowns behind. That's the game he wants to play. Yeah. I expect uh, so I Erica think... here to hang around the backfield. Yeah, and I expect the wizard to go off this half, not the next one. He, he doesn't want to be uh, low on players when he has to make the big play. Yeah, he's going to want to get that bolt now, bolt now. And that being said, I almost wouldn't hate carrying on a rookie and having uh, Punchbag Bob nearby for the bolt. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't hate that either. The problem is that uh, the sucker rat that can then get it without even using the wizard. So it's uh, yeah, that's a scary wizard. bit. But with chorfs, you'll have tackle around at least, and that becomes uh, what is that? Uh, five plus dodge in or four plus dodge in through tackle? That's pretty scary. And there's a touchback, so we can go on whoever he wants. Ooh, that's tempting. That's very tempting, and yep, it is going to go on with postman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. So that bolt, sure, it's got a, that plus one to injury and armor rolls, but it's going to be against AV9. It's much less scary than a bolt on Bob. And we'll yeah. have Bob for potential and also, recovery. And, and also, if he gets three balls, then the ball falls near him, and the ball is in diving tackle. So it's, exactly. It's not bad at all. <clears throat> Yeah, kicker's getting fired after his game. Ooh, there's double skulls. That's pretty rough. Almost quad. One off. Something to note, there's only been one armor break this game. And the rats have it against a chorf. Without Mighty Blow. That's a three die for the Chorfs, and I expect this to be armor break number two, because he's going to pile this on. Nope. No! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Where was this Rubble. when I played wow. against the Sheriff? The Sheriff broke armor every time he hit me on my orcs. Well, when I played against T-Self, he um, got more, more damage than me, and I was, I was dwarfed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, commentator curse. I fucked over Bernie there. <clears throat> oh, nice! I got a ticket for the green board. Oh, wow, well, look I'll at that. I should have mine soon, man. Which means I'm locked into these high elves. For oh. better or for worse. I wonder who I got. Yeah, I'll be curious to see when they put the matchups for those. Hopefully I don't get dwarves. Hopefully I don't have you, Troop, no offense. 
<laughs> I don't want to play against you. Mighty Blow Blitz on the Agi one Chorf. Finds a knockdown. There's another break for the rats. And that's just a stun Chorf. He even had Mighty Blow for the injury roll, but he threw a 1 9. And now T Self will just screen up, play safe, and wait for an opportunity to bolt. Wait for Bernie to make the mistake. And like Bernie I said, Erica. What's up? Oh, no, uh, finished. Oh, no, I was, was going to say Erica is gonna, out in the backfield again. I'm waiting for a bolt. Burning has to be patient here. Uh, it's not so important for him to score. It's more important than not to get scored upon. I'm going to insist on this point because it's, if T self gets the ball, it's over. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. T self scoring here means the game is over. And it looks like we're going to go after Erica. This bull centaur is going to come back and deal with that scoring threat. Which isn't that bad for T-Self. Because that's, that means that we're probably not going to be moving the ball very far forward at all. Especially when we don't break the gutter runner. I think if I'm uh, Bernie now, I move a little bit up to the left, maybe throw some bases on these line rats, and just play it safe. Step the sheriff up, have him mark, a, mark up those line rats, there you go, that's two free hits next turn, hopefully. I don't like the third mark, though. I don't think he's going to have enough players to cage too safely here. I agree. Yeah, David, I don't know how I feel about having a double mark back there. I think he could have just thrown two dice at him. It's, uh, it's no block on that gutter runner, so it's a very high likelihood of knockdown, especially with Frenzy. You're throwing four dice at it. And he would have had uh, another Hobgoblin to short the ball back here. I think we might see the bolt this turn, even if... Oh no, Erica can't score. She can get right into the end zone. And the Agi 5 can go p pick it up and just chuck it. Well, the leap guy's not going to sack the ball, Luke. It's going to be uh, this dude. This dude doesn't have leap. He's got dauntless wrestle and strip ball. The leapers are recovery. So he does need to have that cage so the, the strip ball can't just walk in. And there's no easy path for him to get in right now of how we're currently uh, screening off. The IG5 won't get involved in a play until he absolutely needs to. That's, uh, that's without Dauntless, David. He's thinking about the wizard now? He might be. He, he has a 5 plus dodge in if he wants to go for a strip ball, no GFI. He's not going to take it. Safe play, going after a Hobgoblin. And yeah, none of those dwarfs had guards, so he could have made it a one die just by throwing the lineman at him. So we'll just see T Self back his rats up. He'll try and get Erica out of airmail dodges, two line rats out. He definitely doesn't want to leave the kicker based on the sheriff, because that's a niggle on palm. And that's no fun. Unless you're the sheriff, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> They're both disengaged. I would like to see the kicker move out a little bit more. There he goes. Try not to leave him too clumped up. Yeah, Erica makes it out. She'll go dance somewhere over here, I imagine. Yep. 
waiting for that bolt. He can't keep blitzing Erica. I wouldn't hate throwing a hobgoblin on her, but he can't keep committing to blitz to her. He has to start blitzing this screen and trying to push through. I agree. His players are fast. He can, if he gets in a nice position, he will be in scoring range. But if he stays here, it's not great. And he's going for her again. Erica. This is exactly what T self wants. He's wasting yeah. his blitzes <laughs> and he's not breaking the armor. So she, Erica's just gonna yeah. move out again. Yeah, and Erica is still a uh, scoring threat. So he, yeah, he... still from the ground, he can still score. Himself literally lost nothing. Yeah, Bernie is still stuck at the midway point after two turns. Erica has eaten two blitzes from this very good bull centaur, tying him up back here. And is still in scoring range. And also, there's... I don't think uh, Bernie is trusting uh, his guard enough. He has guard, a lot of guard. And t has none. He, he could be like basing rats if he wants. And he, if he puts him, them in the right position, they can't punch back. This is a seven-man fireball. And we see the fireball. Wow. Oh, and it's killed oh, Bob! Oh. Look, four sixes in a row. Six, six, Seven. six, six, six. six. Oh, oh, but he's okay. One, two, three, five, Boring. sixes in a row. Five, sixes in a row. ABJ's KO KO'd. Ball stayed up. That's important to note. He got two removals. It's for two hobgoblins. The ball is still up. The strip ball gutter runner can get in. I think this favored Bernie if he manages not to lose the ball. Yeah, if he keeps the ball here, he's fine. Because without the wizard now, you just have to hold on to a ball. You don't even have to score. Just hold on to the ball. Just let the clock run out for this half. And grind the rats down the next. So it looks like we're going to go for a two dice on the ball here. If we get the Dauntless proc, we have two dice. We blitz south going yeah. north. And we can chain push the ball into the rest of our team. And truth be told, even if he doesn't get the two dice, it's still a pretty safe uh, blitz. Just yeah. don't call it. He needs to not commit the reroll to the Dauntless, and he needs to reroll the block if he gets a half die. Right. Just don't roll a, roll a one, and you're fine. Yeah, just don't roll a one. Here comes Terrence. He fails the GFI. <laughs> He fails oh. the GFI, and he's hurt. Oh my god. He'll be okay. He does get ap apoed into a minus strength, but sadly, T-Self has taken a badly hurt. And that's a turnover for the rats, and that's a major win for the Chorfs. <clears throat> we can send okay, the Sheriff after Sigmund now. I'm going to say it. Uh, I don't think Bernie has played a good game so far, but <laughs> he's in a Great spot. Absolutely. Uh, if he gets his head on the game now, he... Now you're going a little bit robot there, Truk. Oh, that's probably the shitty connection. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got your thing going. <clears throat> so, yeah, what I expect here is for the Sheriff to go Claw Palm Sigmund. And I think the Postman is going to take the 75% dodge, honestly. From what I've seen of Bernie, I think he wants Sigmund dead. The safe play is to blitz his lineman off. The fun play, the play I'd like to see, is going after Sigmund. <laughs> yeah, that was a very bad turn for T-Self. That's about as bad as it gets. And with the wizard gone, we're going to see uh, Erica left alone in the backfield again, I think. We'll see that bull centaur come on back up. Now oh, the bull's gonna go for the lineman. Boring. He gets a knockdown though. And he's gone. Okay, so we have no wizard. We have no sacker. We have no reroll. We have no reroll. Stop. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see the ball move up on the left here. 
probably just why, above why the sheriff. He use, why doesn't he base stuff? I, I agree. He I think he guard and straight four. Yeah, he could throw the sheriff up, and he could throw uh, that guard blocker up, and that would be a very nice position for him. And he'd yeah, probably get two hits out of them. They, they can't punch you back. They're anti three, so they dodge out. So this no, oh, there's a nice little one dice knockdown. The, this half now isn't about T-Self scoring, it's about him stopping the score and getting ready to try and uh, score on him next half. He's going to be playing only 1-0 down, instead of 2-0. It's a shame about that fireball, 7-man fireball and only getting 2 knockdowns out of it. I was hoping for a little bit more than that. He wasted all the sixes on the... <laughs> yeah, he threw all his sixes at poor Bob. <laughs> Are we going for a one dice? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know who takes it. You, do it. you don't do it with the IG5. You don't do one dice pow hunt. One, two, three, four, five, six... Or maybe he, he's mm. just forcing the the blitz there because you don't want to dodge out with And that that's good enough, I think. Yeah, just yeah, I don't hate forcing screen. the blitz here. Yeah. Just make a screen so you they, and you know that Bernie can't blitz the screen unless he wants to Yeah, there we go. Yeah, he's gonna go after this guy. The there were two removals, Saima, which is good. But they were on two players. I mean, one of them matters, but that player doesn't matter when the ball carrier doesn't go down. None of the chorfs went down. He needed one of those chorfs to go down or the ball carrier to go down to be able to really turn that into something big. And then he snaked the GFI right after, which is just unfortunate. T-Self would, would have gladly uh, changed uh, two removals for two more knockdowns and nobody gets removed. He doesn't care. At yeah. the end, he just wanted the ball and runs away. Yeah, T-Self wasn't balling, fireballing for removals, he was fireballing for a ball there, absolutely. And for removals would have been a nice side effect. And unless he got zero knockdowns, he had a sack of a ball, it was just the quality of a sack that improved or degraded based on how many knockdowns. I don't think Bernie's going to score. I think he's just taking his punches now and playing for overtime. I think Bernie might be able to pull it out. He blitzes uh, Erica here, and he can get over to this right side. He can get some room. Or he can just potato postman up there. He can tie up a bunch of dudes. He might be able to do it. Oh, so wait. This elf made a big mistake. He has no scoring threat. Yeah, he has no realized. scoring threats. So yeah, you can go crazy, just potato. Worst case scenario, no, no, just uh, okay. He, he's a yeah, he's That's going right. for the sheriff. The sheriff's going in, piling on. Still nothing. Yeah, but he can potato now because uh, worst thing that can happen is they go like this to uh, half time, but uh, he, he can't be scored back. Yeah, he can't get scored on because Verica being out there. So I wouldn't hate a potato. He can yeah. run uh, run the okay. postman up, mark up Sigmund with, uh, I don't know, with Waluigi. Maybe, maybe you go for a double GFI and try and mark him with Keyboard Warrior. I wouldn't hate yeah. having Waluigi go around and blitz this AG4. That'd be a nice target. Or AG5, rather. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see the tackle marked and just put potato forward. And then he has to, like, red dice... Uh, a strength for a guy bludger, Ooh. you know? <laughs> what we might but actually that... see here, Waluigi blitzes via G5. But we already used the blitz. Oh, with, right, we, uh, yeah, we, we blitzed Erica, never mind, okay. No, no, he... All he can do now is mark and potato. Yeah. Yeah, we go and potato up from the top left. Yeah, Bernie has not had a good blocking game so far. The Sheriff's been awful. Maluigi's been awful. Erica's eaten four mighty blow hits now. Mm. 
This is not what you want when you're Chorfs against rats. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Mark that guy, because that's the dangerous guy. I wouldn't sideline Cage. They're just asking to be get surfed. Yeah, he can easily get surfed with that. Okay, that's better. Yeah. He needs to stay there too, because otherwise, we'll probably see a surf on uh, Waluigi. Because he could surf and then tie up a postman pretty easily. And because Chorps are slow, we might not be able to do very much. Steak, thanks for that follow. And Big Chuck, I didn't even see you followed. Thank you. And Bad CR Tiger, thanks for a follow. There is, I think, a way to surf the ball. But it's super dicey and not worth it. Now there isn't. And there's no surf on Maluigi from Matt Iver. Yeah, I like this. But there's a lot of IG4 free, so the, the ball will probably get sacked. Yeah, I expect to sack this turn. You can run the IG5 even if you want, and be the second assist, which it looks like he is, and go for the hit with Sigmund. You'll have no recovery, but you don't need recovery, really. You can tie up, uh, what's his face, Waluigi. Oh, uh, that's that, rough. That's where you want those rerolls. <laughs> and bring Sigmund around, though, and at least leave tackle on him. <clears throat> you have to be careful not to mark him too much and give a, a chain push. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that's a little bit worrying. I wouldn't hate throwing a GFI even to try and get the tackle down there, and then you avoid the chain push. We're not gonna, though. See, so yeah, there is a chain push here. If we, uh, we slot in Waluigi to one up to his right, yeah, and you punch him with a dwarf. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then you jump. Oh, oh. yeah. And he needed that one. He, yeah, he to needed avoid, it. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah, you slot him. Actually, no. That you that would have still been a chain push. Yeah, yeah, but you get, but you, you're still marked oh, by, yeah, by yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Now he's marked by nothing. He just bushes himself to the side and scores. Yep. It should it's be a pretty two easy. Dice. Yeah. No, 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 that's the blitzer. What are you doing? He doesn't see it? Oh, that's a shame. Or maybe he sees something else. No, no, maybe he's he's, he's going to take the hit on Nessus with uh, this mighty blow dwarf and he's going to blitz with a hop goblin. Okay, but in that case, I would have uh, marked with the hop goblin and blitz with the Yeah, you blitz with block, anyway. yeah. Okay, but he saw it. Yeah, he's still gonna do it. And he's got his knockdown, so it's good. That's a score for Bernie Buffett. To the side, not forward, to the side. Oh, and I got and my greenhorn too good. Oh, that works too. Yeah, that works as well. Uh, so now we foul him. <laughs> <laughs> With the ball carrier. Okay. That was a nice play. Yep. It's 1-1. One, one. But, oh. I think, uh, I don't think it's like getting diced, but dice have been favorable for Bernie. You have to admit that. I mean, dice have been pretty good for Bernie, but Bernie has gotten, what, one removal on the rats? And it removed itself. Well, there's two. They both removed themselves and they got apoed. We see Bernie's KO wakes up. t selfs does not. But T-Self has that bench. No wizard. And T-Self's back on defense. Yeah. So the, the main concern here for Bernie is securing the ball. Don't risk getting like a blitz or anything. Punches are not so important now. You have eight turns to, to score. Just 
spread them out, make sure you have enough to to defend yourself from a from a blitz or from a perfect defense or something like that. So I've just been told by uh, the man himself, Miraskadu, I've got Andy Davo for the Greenhorn Cup. <laughs> well, that's not so bad. Andy yeah. will, will go for SPP. Yeah, he's playing <laughs> vampires, so this will be a fun game. <laughs> It will it will mark a record for uh, most vanity passes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll just keep passing at each other. Uh, that'll be a good time. I'll have to schedule that after this game. So yeah, Bernie plays this slow and steady, and he should have this game. Eight turns yeah. to push your ball down the field and smack on some rats. I think he'll be okay. Unless the rats get a blitz here and a shallow kick, and then you just feel sorry for Bernie. And that's a riot. That's that... favorable for, for, for T-Cell. Yeah, yeah. Unless that's turns. A that's a fantastic kick. One and nine on this could be disastrous for Bernie. Yeah. Just secure the ball. Don't put many people around it. Make sure. Yeah. No, 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 no. That guy was useful where he was. What are you doing? Yeah, I would have moved one of the guys on my right side over. Put that tackle on a, the relevant end. Kian there, thanks for the follow. And Crystal Hunter. What Definitely a, like to... an unfortunate kick for. What Trust. I would, would, like, would have liked to see is uh, the L West punch to spur, and if you free away for the for the diving tackle guy to get in the face of the other runners, I would have done that. Uh, I don't know if he'd be supporter enough to warrant throwing him in very well. Oh geez, tons of followers. J can say talent. Thank you. The issue I have with uh, throwing the diving tackle in there is he'd be alone. Because your other two chorfs here are going to be stuck on the line throwing hits. You see the Sheriff finally gets an armor break. Look at that. He's, is he going to pile it on? You should pile this on. There he goes. Hey. There we go. The Sheriff did something. Killed a line rat. He's definitely dead. I think Waluigi needs to not blitz here, honestly. I think he needs to stay on this left side and defend the ball. Because otherwise the rats could flood on the left and he'll be in a lot of trouble. I agree. Because there's no way that Bernie throws GFIs of the ball once it's over there. And I mean, technically... He could get surfed, right? He could throw a half dice of a ball if he doesn't and get surfed. But I think that if he brings his bull over, which he is, yep, he should be safe from that. Unless he commits the Agi 5, in which case you just kill the Agi 5 for even daring to go that far. I, I, I still take the Agi 5, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Now it's a lot safer. Now he's safe. Rat's OTTD is pretty good. He's got the Agility 5 Leaper here. It should be pretty easy if it comes to it. As long as this guy survives, I think he'll have the one turn. <clears throat> so I think this will go for the ball anyway. Yeah, I think he's going to slip around back. Hit this, he's going to hit this edgy one chorf and he's going to get in between all of his players. Yeah. 
They'll be able to screen off <coughs> the ball from the rest of a team and prepare for a sack attempt next turn. With one DFI, he can put the kicker on the diving tackle die. I wouldn't face it. Yeah, I'd like that as an end, turn, end of turn. End of the turn. Yeah. Last action for that GFI. It's gonna help him have him help screen the chorfs off though. I don't mind that either. Maybe you throw the gutter runner back there. The rookie. And it looks like that's almost what's happening. He can take that one extra step if he wants to mark him. But the entire chorf team is now separated from the ball. Which is never good news. We could see the uh, Mighty Blow Bull Centaur go after the wrestler. This doesn't get reeled. Just leave that. Casualty of War. I, I don't think I'd hate the AG5 or uh, hitting the wrestler, but that would leave the ball very exposed, and I don't think it'll happen. Yeah, I think this is going to be a very sketchy cage. If it's a cage at all. It can be. I don't... But he, he, won't, he won't make any forward progress. Yeah, this is exactly what T-Self wants, setting up this far back, because now T-Self can set up a screen in the middle of Bernie's field. And that's going to be really hard for Bernie to break through in six turns. Five even, because his attorney is setting up this deep cage. Yeah. And if he manages to stop the, the score and then wins the on the toss, he, he basically wins the game. I yeah, exactly. I the rats not to turn in this. Yeah, but the rats should be able to score if they have the opportunity easily. Yeah, the wrestle strip ball is screened off from the chorfs, which is a big deal, because now he'll be able to sneak in there. He can go around the back and avoid the diving tackle as well. Or even go just through this hobgoblin here instead of through the diving tackle. And the IG5's on the right side for recovery. This could be this could be the turn for T-Self. This is probably when he'll pull the trigger and go in. Yeah, the lack of guard in the cage is is complicated. I think he should have swapped the positioning of uh, Waluigi and the postman. Or even had that hobgoblin on the left side. Put the diving tackle and the tackle on the side of the wrestle, wrestle strip baller is. And then have the chorf where he is. Because that back right cage corner isn't doing very much against his positioning right now. So... <clears throat> We have a 5 plus with reroll into a 4 plus into a 1 die. Yeah? I believe this is going to be a 3 plus Dauntless for a 1 die. Because that's only strength. Oh, three. yeah, yeah. 3 plus, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but yeah. 5 plus with reroll into 3 plus. Oh, there goes the edgy 5. That's a big removal. That's the recovery guy. Yeah, that's, what, that, that's the recovery, exactly. <laughs> so now you sack it, and so what? Now you Get sack it and you hope for a good scatter for uh, Erica here. Yeah, or... I don't know how you call the blood tackle. Uh, it's a 5+, it's a David. It starts as a 2+, plus, 3, 4, 5. 5+, five plus, 3+, plus, 1 dies. Yep. Go. The 5+, plus the has reroll, so it's not terrible. <clears throat> The uh, 3 plus, if it fails, isn't that big a deal. You don't burn the reroll, and it's a 2 plus for the sack, pretty much. Or, well, no, it's a, it's a 4 yeah, plus, 2 plus for no fail. And if you fail the dodge and you're burning now, you punch everything away and you uh, gang of foul that guy, because that's the only guy that can stop you now. Yeah. We're not. Oh, no, we are going in. It just didn't show a blitz. And that's a dodge fail. 4 yeah. and a 4. Sorry. So Bernie can secure this now, just punch the guys away and gang foul that guy. Yeah, we foul the crap out of him, we take all these beautiful hits. Yeah. So much mighty blow and tackle on these poor rats, it's gonna be... Yeah, it's gonna be a sad turn. 
Erica goes down. No mighty blow for her. And she takes another hit. What a champ. Don't worry about power progress. You get you have four turns, and if you remove that rat, you have four easy turns. I think <coughs> um I think the play here is to punch the kicker, blitz uh Sigmund down, and put the ball on the uh midfield right side. And you'll be very safe over there. Everything else is super like far it. away. Sheriff is gonna have some fun with the niggled kicker. Uh, no pile on, no armor break. No fun. But he needs to be standing. Morally, I think that was the time to cage dive. Even if... Because if, if that worked, the recovery isn't fantastic, but it throws him on the back foot pretty heavily. And this deep into your own half, being on the back foot like that would have meant the end of the, the drive for uh, Bernie. With so few turns. Uh, I don't... I, I, I want to see that fall. <laughs> I really do. I think it'll still happen. You can take the hit with a postman and dodge out the uh, keyboard warrior hobgoblin. It's a two assist foul on the most important gutter runner on the pitch. That's a risk you gotta take with rats sometimes, Morley. I think maybe T-Self could have played this slow and steady, but he would have taken a lot of attrition and overtime would have been very difficult. He had that opportunity there. And I don't mind him taking it. I would have taken it as well. I think it, yeah, a 5 plus with reroll is it's a fair shot. In fact, it's over 50% of happiness. Dirty player survives a mighty blow hit. Tackle on the uh, block tackle gutter runner and a freed up hobgoblin for fouling. There we go. Only a one step run up, so this should be a send off. That's a perfect, a perfect KO. result. That's all you really no need. No send off, too. Lucky him. Yeah. Can bring this hobgoblin up to mark up Erica now, and we are in a fantastic spot if you're a dwarf. Uh, can we say game over now, or you still have a hope for T self? Um, a good turn here from T-Self could make things difficult for Bernie, but I don't see a world here where Bernie doesn't score. I do see a world where the Agi 5 gutter runner wakes up, and we one turn and go to overtime. Yeah, that might happen. You're right. And he has a, a babe, so it's not impossible to get these guys back. Yep, he has a babe. He has four KOs. I expect three of them to come back with a babe, and he should have enough players in as long as the rest of his team is safe for the one turn. You also have to remember that Chorps are slow, so if he wants to advance his ball, either he's only defending with two players, and these Chorps are going to be kind of slowly waddling up the back, and that might leave an opportunity for T-Self. Or it's Potato. Yeah, I think T-Self is on the same mindset, because now he's not going for the ball, he's just going to trying to be annoying at this point. Yeah, keep pushing back the Chorps, hope you get a lucky stun in there, and a, a, a well-placed stun could completely stall Bernie for a turn. And that's what he wants right now. Hey, Jimmy, how's it going? This, this little line rat wanted to be a gutter runner. Didn't quite do it. Or, well, he did do it. He rolled a one just like a gutter runner and oh hurt himself God. just like a gutter runner. So T-Self has killed three rats while dodging. Yeah. Or at least removed three, but... No, yeah, killed three or not. Yeah, he's uh, he's removed three of his own rats on uh, his own dice rolls. There is the wrestler uh, killing himself on a GFI almost. And we had two line rats kill themselves off of dodges. So what I expect is these two bull centaurs will move up to midfield. And the ball will follow close behind. The sheriff probably goes after this gutter runner here. But you're right. This is far from over, especially because this is a red team with a bench. Yeah. Yeah, the rats should have that one turn. Yeah, no stand firm. 
Uh, we will have Strength 4 in play if he wants to throw all his Strength 4 up on the front. But Varat should be able to do with that pretty easily. This gets piled on every day. Just a stun. Good for him. Ball can run out to midfield now. Both centaurs can come up to support it. And it'll just be the Storm Vermin back to try and defend. So I expect him not to. Yeah, it'll be pretty crappy dice for one turn, but it's still dice that T-Self mm -hmm. should be able to make. Are we at the point where T-Self says, okay, let's just punch Hobble so maybe I can get a mana advantage? I think so. No, not. I think, um, I think Erica steps forward one, and we see uh, Nessus blitz ABJ and maybe try and get around to be an assist. I don't know if he has a movement for that, though. No, he doesn't have a movement for that. I would like to see uh, this Mighty Blow hit on Noob of Clan Noob. I don't know if he'll be able to get it, though. And it's a very conservative push forward. He could have gotten a lot more land out of that. Yeah. It's not that unlikely, Jimmy, with the uh, AG5 Leaper. It's a very good one-turning piece. We'll need two pushes, which should be doable. And that's a very safe cage. Yeah, and he has a, a wrestle, but more importantly, a dauntless uh, gutter runner, and he's straight for the first push. I've seen him do it before. Yeah, that would make sense to use him for a first push, because getting a two dice on a second push is much easier. Nope, no guard for T-Self. He does have a babe for these KOs out here, but he's missing three line mat three line rats. Has one bench. Yeah, no sidestep on his gutter runners does hurt him here. Credit to T-Self, he is still trying to get him away and slow down Bernie. Ooh, that's Rush Lattice. And yeah, the gutter is still so you, KO'd. So you just punch Erika before, right? Um, I wouldn't hate punching Erika here, yeah. You don't do it with a Sheriff, you just do it with uh, the Frenzy Bull. And yeah, and you move forward after. There's a pal for you. Mighty blow on armor 7. Nah, she's fine. Still stun is, is pretty rough because uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it won't be relevant for when he needs her. Yeah, if he does decide to try and pull the trigger on him at some point with maybe Viaggi for Vort Vermin, and having that gutter runner would be helpful. But at this point, I think it's just Bernie trying to slow him down. Maybe Bernie has to roll dice. He is moving this cage forward very slowly. We could see um, the rookie vermin and the dirty player run around front and get him away and maybe slow him down enough to force a GFI. Yeah, why, why not make more more forward progress? We had the... He's got the speed, it. yeah. Maybe he just doesn't want to get too disconnected. Play it conservative. Yeah, I guess. He's locking down the Achi 4 Vermin here with a uh, Diving Tackle. He can slip a Hobgoblin in there if he's concerned about the cage. Next turn, I expect the ball to surge forward, though. Especially if uh, T-Self keeps the rest of his players back like this, he'll be able to potato safely. And if not, he can escort the ball for two bulls, and that should be enough. For just one turn of safety. And we are one assist fouling the gutter runner. 
And there's a send off for ABJ. Double twos. He does have a bench of one. So I don't expect to see any more fouls out of Bernie. Unless the VIG4 Vermin hits the floor. Yeah, I still wouldn't foul it. I think I, I'd save my foul for for overtime if it comes to that. Yeah, I think I agree with you there. Just rely on Mighty Blow Hits to remove it. Unless he gets a very nice foul on the IG4 guy next turn, which I don't expect him to. There's a one die. There's a pow on the bull. Freeing up the IG4. Breaking the bull. Wow. KOing the bull. <laughs> Dirty player. So that's a hero red. Showing that's he can do. He can do just as much of his hands as he can of his boots. <laughs> so how safe does this ball get now for his turn? Because these dwarfs can't get far enough, I don't think, to really do enough. He can blitz a Blork the Orc out of the way and get center field, but it might become rough dice. If you can't get the ball up enough. Uh, well, punch back is movement seven, so I think it will be fine if he's smart about his move in his uh, movement dice. He's got to get to the twelve yard line to not have to throw any GFIs. He probably wants to blitz him with the guy that is in the back, the the Palinon guy. No, not that guy. You needed that guy for the cage. I think he's gonna become a back cage corner, and we blitz the dirty player for sheriff. Or we just use these uh, other four free players here. Ooh, okay, maybe we're going after the Agi 4 guy for Bull. If we stun the Agi 4, then the ball is safe, as long as we screen off the kicker, or the dirty player enough. It's a pretty inconsequential hit and stun. Get that, get, that, get that scoring threat, Bernie, because it's your last turn to get Yeah, well, Waluigi here is a scoring threat, but he's not exactly an ideal scoring threat. What? And we are going after the Agi 4. If we get a stun here, then we have our touchdown. It's almost guaranteed. And we do get our yeah. stun. So Bernie should have this mm. touchdown. Yeah, just run away and put some guys in the, in the way of the... Yeah, you, you screen off the wrestler. And you should be okay. Oh, look at Erica though. Erica could be a problem if he decides to go straight north. But if he goes uh, to the left a little bit and takes a more midfield position, he should be okay. Okay, that's not a nice cage unless he goes forward because he, he will need a, an unnecessary gear fight. I hope he makes it forward and not back. It looks like he is going to okay, go forward. He's going to bring this Chorf up. Okay, that, that's yep. good. He should be good. Okay, we good. should have a uh, Chorf score. Yeah, that's... The Agi 4 being stunned, I think we see Erika come back and assist on a hit for Nessos. I think Erika goes in this becomes an assist for a hit on uh, this Agi 1 Chorf. Nessus blitzes and goes after the movement free Chorf. Or we're going in, maybe. You don't reroll this. You save these rerolls no, for overtime in one turn. Yeah. I think he was going to try and go in with a wrestler, maybe, or at least try and, like, stall him or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> hey, Doc, thanks for a sub, man. How you doing? I... I'd take this hit. Maybe make it a 3 die, but take it. Yeah, you can make this a 3 die. Pretty easily. 3, 4, 5, 6. You commit one more to 7. There you go. It's a mighty blow hit on a wrestle kick, or a wrestle dirty player. That could be a big deal for overtime if he gets removal. I would have liked to have seen Bernie come from the other angle, just so we can get an extra hit if he needed it with Fat Chorf. But there's no break. Or just punch him with the with the Chorf and only blitz him if it's necessary. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been good as well. He could have made it 3-die all the way, I think, if he uh, blitzed from the other side and then hit with the Chorf if he needed it. But that, that's like... 
That's nitpicky for his last turn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's super nitpicky. Let's see if y'all important K rolls. The bull wakes up. Unfortunate for T self, but it was a lucky KO in the first Congrats, place. Congrats, you have a, a subscriber now. Yeah, I got one sub. Ooh, is that the AG5 that stayed out, or is that the Wrestler? That's a Wrestler, okay. I think the one turn is on then. Missing the Dauntless yeah. is a shame, but we should have enough players, especially if he leaves Chorfs on the line. He needs to put Strength 4 on the line. And I'm not sure I'm, I'm liking this, uh, this setup. I don't either. I think he's trying to bank on having the sideline two-player limit mess up T-Self, but then he can just go off the middle guy, I think, or the left guy. Yeah, and also screening an AG5. Yeah, this is an AG5 <laughs> leaper. Not, you no, know, you want to prevent the chain push. You don't want to give him hard dodges, because there are no hard dodges for this last. Yeah, he can go wherever he wants, whenever he wants. You wanted to prevent the chain push. That's the that's the play. <clears throat> Which with no guard for the rat, and if he puts a strength four on the line, he should be able to make it very difficult to find that push. Exactly. I don't like this at all. This is a super easy one turn. I agree. Yeah, no, not even guard on the line. Okay? Yeah, there's no guard. Super easy. This is just giving it up. This is like, this is grade school one turning for T self. I mean, I don't hate this setup against an a normal team maybe that that has trouble going through through screens. Yeah, but like, against this rat. If this was a human team instead of a rat yeah. team, this would be fine. But these are Skaven with Agility 5 Leap. This is the easiest one turn that T-Self is going to see in the postseason. Barring a pitch clear one turn. That's true, 130. This should fail because it's T-Self rolling the dice. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, the tropes are also bunched up here, making this a lot easier for him. So, uh, this is a gutter runner with no movement up and no sprint, so we need two pushes, right? Yep, two pushes to throw two GFIs. We might be able to get a third push in there, maybe, but it might not be worth the risk. I don't think it is. This should be pretty basic. You have the deep gutter runners back there for retrieval. So I believe what's going to happen is we're going to hit Don't Rely on the Apo. We're going to push him up into this nice little square in the middle. The Dirty Player will take a block, pushing the IG4 forward, and the Storm Vermin will finish it off, leaving him based on one tackle zone. Two, if he doesn't find a push on the last hit. I, can I make a prediction here? My prediction is perfect defense. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to be a perfect defense. <laughs> And T-Self is going to cry. Or it's going to be a rock to Viaggi 5. That's a very shallow kick. This could be a touchback. There's a pitch invasion. Viaggi 5 goes down! Oh my god. He's so lucky. Bernie, Bernie. Buffin <laughs> wins the game off a pitch invasion on turn 16. After a crazy weak one turn defense. None of his players went down. It was all rats that got taken oh down. Oh my god. Every agility four player is just line rats hanging out. Okay, can we call this a dicing? I think we can call this a bit of a dicing. <clears throat> Congratulations, Bernie. Commiserations for t uh, uh Well, this is Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl has never been a fair game. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, the only thing that uh, I hate about this is that we we could have seen this self uh, crying live, you know. But yeah. Instead, we got to hear ourselves. <laughs> we got we got to laugh at him instead of hear him cry. I suppose that'll have to do. <laughs> So that's Bernie Buffin advancing to the next round of a Challenger's Cup. T Self might be able to get a uh, contra. Uh, con there. What, what's the word? Uh, a free dirty player out of this if he gets this uh, pass. Complimentary, there we go. Complimentary dirty player. Yeah, yeah, the, the pitch invasion was saving the gutter runner. Yep. That was one, two, three, four, five players going down for the rats, and not a single one for the chorfs. Well, the chorfs did have the same, so... Yeah, you expect the chorfs to have less players go down, but you still expect a chorf player to go down. And it looks like the chorfs ate all the low dice. And then you just look at the rat's dice, and there's no ones in there at all. <laughs> all the ones are eaten up by the Chorf Pitch Invasion dice. Unfortunate for T-Self. Okay, so I, I was wrong about the, um, about the perfect defense, but I, I just knew that the kickoff going to hurt him. Yeah, but we, we both knew the kickoff it was It was so screw. tasty to make this one. This was an easy one turn. So. We, we <laughs> talked up his one turn so much, how Bernie put up a weak defense, how T-Self should have this in the bag at the IG-5, and here we are. Throwing a vanity pass <laughs> from line rat to line rat. And failing it. <laughs> yep. Oh. Didn't even get the accurate pass off. Yeah, T-Self couldn't win because he couldn't roll ones. Ooh, I think that's... Is this the guy who got niggled? I think that's the line rat who got niggled. That's unfortunate. Uh, no. No, it's not niggled. Well, you can't check right now because the game isn't confirmed. It just, end, uh, just end, ended. Ah, okay. Yeah, so we'd have to wait until they confirm. 19 blocks for the rats to 31. Low block game, which is what the rats want, but they still took 4 casualties and 4 KOs off those 31 blocks sustained. Three of those casualties, of course, caused by the rats themselves. So now the Torts have an orc team to play. Yeah, now it's a Torts versus if the they roll, If they roll these casualty dice, they're going to have a, a bad time. So Yeah, they'll, uh... they need to step it up against those orcs and get some removals. Because otherwise, your orcs will pummel them. Looking at some dice. Contract killers. 9 for 3 on GFIs, which is pretty close to average, considering the amount, the amount of dice rolled. Nothing too particularly crazy. A decent amount of knockdowns. For rats, a lot of skulls compared to how many knockdowns they rolled. Almost as many skulls as they rolled knockdowns. Yeah, that, that was hard. 42% but, going for it. But the most important plays for the rats failed not on block dice, but on dodge dice. Yeah, on dodge or dice GFIs. and GFIs. 42% yeah. is abysmal. Yeah, you expect better from rats. Yeah. On the other hand, he did dodge a lot of AG3. Yeah, yeah, the <clears> dodges <throat> are a lot of AG3 and very, but that's about average for AG3 and AG4. GFI is at 42%. Is, I just keep looking at that number. That's orc numbers. <laughs> it should be like around 87, right? Yeah, it should be 83. That's uh, for 83, two pluses. Right. Yeah, that, 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 that's hard. And, and most importantly, uh, the, that snaked GFI, that was brutal. You know? Yeah, that, that GFI you, you changed the game. Of, yeah, you can fail a lot of inconsequential. GFIs, but it wasn't inconsequential at all. All right, well, with that game all done, let's see who is streaming. And it looks like Sean Man's live, so we'll send you on over there doing some CCL Norse and High Elves. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, hopefully, I'll have a couple more playoff casts coming up. I might be doing one tomorrow, maybe. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to send you on over to Sean Man. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, Truk. Yeah, it was a fun cast, fun game. 
and see you guys over at Sean Mans.